Hey everybody, say hello Zoe. Hello. Yeah, that's right, we're on live. You may recognize her from some of the, um, the YouTube videos that we've been doing recently. Have you been seeing them? Let, let us know if you've actually been on the channel uh, on YouTube under the routine episodes. Say hello, let us know where you're from. And uh, if you're checking them out, that's awesome. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a super secret of learning and mastery. <laughs> That's right. Not even Zoe knows. It's like, what the hell is this dude talking about? We're just waiting for the classes to start. But um, it's a really good an interesting point to understand and to learn. I'm going to go into my little coach's corner. Uh, thank you, Zoe. Uh, about mastery. Most people don't understand what it means. And they get really all like, what's it called? I want to say the word discombobulated. They get all stressed out and freaked out when... Um, when they don't end up mastering something, when like the steps become too difficult or too hard and they're like, ah, oh, this is so difficult, my life sucks and they can't uh, continue. And I wanna help you understand the four stages of learning and this applies to everything. So if you see a professional, someone who's really good at their craft, say a golf or a professional tennis player who's returning serves like 200 kilometers an hour, or of course a professional ballroom or Latin dancer. It's pretty easy to think they're gifted or they've got an innate ability. We forget the hours and hours of training that has gone in beforehand. Uh, it's somehow easier to justify that they must be talented or better because they might look better. So um, this is really going to be a secret to unlock your key about how you can become a better ballroom or Latin dancer and apply this to any skill that you want to develop. So really, if, uh, if you've heard these before, follow along with me. If you haven't, then uh, this will be really good learning. The first one is unconscious incompetency. What that means is, so unconscious means we do automatically, right? So the unconscious part of our mind or personality is where our habits are and our behaviors are. So if you think about how you tie your shoes, you tie your shoes without much thought, you just tie them. But remember, there was a point where you had to learn how to do it. And you didn't know which went in where and the loop and the hole. The same with driving. Driving is the same thing. Uh, when we first learned to drive, it was stressful. We didn't know how to, uh, uh, I'd like to welcome people tuning in now, give us a little like and share. Uh, but when you were driving, when you first learned to do that or ride a bike, it was very stressful. You didn't know uh, how to put the key in the ignition, where to look, what uh, adjustments you need to make. That is the unconscious mind. The moment that you start to do it automatically without thinking, you can actually go on what's called a thought trip or uh, talk on your phone or have a conversation as you drive and you don't even have to think about how you do it. That is what unconscious means. You have no thought to it, it just happens automatically. So when we first start anything, um, the, 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 the second level will kick in. So an unconscious incompetent, they just know, they don't know that they don't know and they're not very good at it. The second one is conscious incompetency. So that's the person who first takes a dance class. So they step into the dance studio, shaking, sweaty palms, like you could probably feel me on this one, a little bit nervous. And they have that innate ability within them, but they haven't developed it. So they've got the conscious incompetency uh, learning stage going on. Now, people may stay in this for years or months, right? So they're incompetent. They, they can't close their feet properly. They can't dance on time. That's what that really means. And the thing is, they know that. Now, the third stage of learning is conscious competency. So that's when you know how to do your waltz, you know how to do your cha-cha, you know how to do your routines, you can do them to music. And you can do them confidently in a manner like you can close your feet, you can dance on time. But you still have to give a lot of thought. So a good example of this is people who might do early level medals. So like a bronze level medal or even silver. I still see some top amateurs like this, right? Where you can see they're thinking about their routine as they dance. They're, they're really thinking hard about the routine. And that's when they haven't hit the fourth stage of learning, which is the mastery level. And that's where we all want to get to. Um, it's, it's the place you want to be in. And that is when you're an unconscious competent. So you, you just perform so well that you, you, you don't even remember that you're performing well. Like, so if you look at a top level dancer, someone may be competing in Blackpool um, or some people on YouTube you may admire, you may have your professional fans out there that you like to watch, they are most definitely unconscious competence. So they don't have to think about their routine, it just happens. They've done it so much and so often, it's literally hardwired in their body. Um, their brain and their nervous system have completely wired, and there's a saying what fires wires. And so the more that you fire off neurons in your brain doing a certain exercise a certain way, you repeat that skill again and again, it becomes hardwired. But to get to a point of that 
uh, unconscious competency is really your goal. That's what mastery means. So you'll find someone who plays an instrument uh, like a professional. So Beyonce, for example, she is definitely unconscious competent. Uh, Ed Sheeran, anyone who's a top level, like a, a rapper like Eminem, right? Unconscious competent. He doesn't even have to think how do I rap. He does it, right? Whereas, you know, the bottom level rapper is like, you know, probably incompetent and consciously incompetent, you know. Sorry, I got interrupted there. So what that means for you is uh, to put in practice. Now, there's a saying that there's a 10,000 hour rule. So if you wanna do the work to become an unconscious competent, uh, you've gotta put the work in. Now, what that means is you have gotta be deliberate in your practice, and you also have to give at least 10,000 hours to the skill you're trying to develop, minimum. But you have to do it with a certain way, and I think I might do that in a later episode, talk about deliberate practice versus probably the practice you may be doing or most people are doing which doesn't really yield the results that you want. So I wanna thank you for your time today. Let me know if you like these style of lessons and uh, make sure you subscribe to YouTube for the, uh, the videos we've got coming up there for you, the routine ones, and we have a lot more content coming your way. This is Vaughn, thank you, and uh, enjoy mastering the art of ballroom dancing, and now you know what mastery means.